Hi everyone, thank you for being here today and thank you to MDNet for letting me present my work. Um, my name is Alfonso de la Vega and I work at the Software Engineering and Real-Time Group at the uh, University of Cantabria in Spain. And I'm here to present Pinset, which is a DSL that allows extracting tabular data set from models uh, in an easier way than what you can do with the existing tools. By the end of this talk, I hope uh, to have transmitted to you that uh, extracting data sets from model, although a simple task, can get tricky and tedious in some situations and that making a DSL for this uh, makes uh, perfect sense. Um, Pinset is uh, one of the Epsilon languages, so if you have Epsilon installed in your Eclipse instance, you, pr you already have uh, Pinset. Here is the link to the documentation and here is a link also to the 2018 article that there is about Pinset. Um, some things might be outdated in this article, so I suggest you start with the uh, Epsilon documentation. Here you have links to the examples that I'm going to use in this, uh, in this demo, and you should also have these slides with all the, with all the links. I will make sure that uh, they are uh, put into the chat. So I wanted to start, before talking about Pinset, about the inherent problem of uh, transforming some part of a model or a, mo or a complete model into uh, a table format. So these are three steps that we need to perform that are the inherent complexity of, uh, this, uh, of this task. So first, we need to select a list of elements. For instance, we could select model elements, but we could also use numbers or text. Um, it doesn't matter. Each one of these elements is going to be the seed uh, of each row in our data set. So what we need to do in step two is write a function to calculate each column of our tabular data set. So we could use EOL, OCL, or Java to write functions that we can evaluate over the selected elements. So we, for instance, to generate the row from the first element, we could uh, evaluate all the functions uh, that we define for the columns over this element. And then we do this, evaluate the functions over all the elements, and arrange all these results into a tabular structure into a tabular format such as CSV, Excel, uh, anything that uh, we may, may need. In the end, we will end up with something like uh, this here. For each element, we will have a row, and each row is composed by the evaluation of all these functions. So this is, these are the steps, I think, that we need to perform in every case that we want to extract a data set. So let's see uh, now what approaches we can follow and what is the accidental complexity that gets added when using these approaches. So the first one I have uh, enumerated here is just using EOL or J Java or any other language to calculate the values and then print these values with commas to generate, for instance, a CSV to the console. So I've, I've done that in the past and it's tedious, it's verbose, like you printing commas can be tricky you may need to add another column, modify a header, um, modify some function, etc. If your script gets bigger uh, and bigger, it gets easier. Um, sorry, it gets more complicated to maintain, to maintain, and all the rest. Also, one thing that uh, is, that I notice is well, modifications that you may need to apply, include in your CSV require might require changes in several places of your script. So. Um, you may them, you may you might end up forgetting some of these changes and you end up with a data set that has errors that you may not detect if the data set is huge so also if you want to do things right you end up uh, implementing a lot of functions you may them, you implement a function to generate a column to create a cell value and to structure all of that into a data set so if you if uh, when you do things right, you end up doing a library, why not do a DSL uh, from the beginning? So you can go all the way and then decide to do a pipeline. You, ca you, you can have a model from which you want to extract some data in the form of a table, and this model conforms to its original meta model. And then you do a model to model transformation to what I have called a data set model. So this data set model conforms to the meta model that you can see here. We have data sets that have rows, that have cells, well, corresponding to certain columns. So we basically represent a data set in the form of model elements. From here, we can do a model to text transformation to generate a CSV file, for instance. This approach has 
the same uh, problems as the previous one may have some new issues i'm not going to go into details here if you want more details go to the article that we did in 2018 because that's part of our evaluation here you have some links if you want to have a quick glance at the examples that we used i'm just going to open one of them which is this which calculates a set of basic metrics from uml class diagrams set of class metrics so if i click here and everything works yeah here i'm in a github script in etl i'm not going to focus into the code actually but this block here these first lines are used to decide the structure of the data set so the columns that are included there there is an etl rule here that is used to determine uh, the values of the columns so this is linked to the previous uh, block up here and on the bottom we can see the kind of operations that I was talking about where, where you create cells, columns, and all the rest. In total, there are like 60 lines of code here, of ETL code, just to generate a simple data set. And we will see how Pinset can do this in um, something like 12 lines. So let's go back and talk about Pinset a bit. So Pinset tries to have uh, less accidental complexity than the other approaches. Also, it's a DSL, so we can include some specific features that are not found in general purpose tools, like special column generations or ways to um, process a data set, like filling nulls or normalizing columns. And it provides visualization via an integration with PICT. So here in the middle, you have a data set uh, rule, which is how we define data sets in, Pixel, in Pinset. It has a name. And if we go back to the three steps that I uh, talked about at the beginning. First, we need to select a list of elements. What we are doing here by selecting all the class types of this model, which is a UML model. Second, we need to write an EOL snippet to calculate each column. Here, we are doing that in the form of uh, uh, in the form of a column keyword, a name of the column, and then an EOL expression. And this is done for all the um, for all the columns of this data set. There are other column generators not only this one and then the third part evaluating the function and then arranging everything into a csv format that happens in the background so you just need to write this and then run this over a model and you get the csv which i think reduces a lot the boilerplate code that i have just shown for instance with etl but enough of the slides and let's see this in eclipse so let me move to my eclipse instance so here uh, we have the meta model of the example I'm going to use, which is the same as the one shown in the documentation. So you can uh, relate to that uh, later. So this is the grades.eco uh, meta model on the right, on the left, but we are going to use a picto visualization to uh, have a look at it in a more uh, graphical uh, way. So let me remove the tree and put this it's smaller because I'm going to put a table down here. So I'm going to pin this view so that it doesn't move in the rest of the demo. So I hope you can see this. Let me do it a little bit uh, larger. So here we have a course, and this course has students. Students are going to be the rows of our data sets, all of them. And uh, st a student can have contact info and grades. And these grades are um, provided over evaluation items. These evaluation items belong to the course. So this is our meta model. And as a model, we are going to use this one, which is defined in Flexamai, which is a textual syntax to define EMF models. And uh, here we have a course with four students. So let's go to Pinset. Uh -huh. Here we have a uh, data set rule that defines a student summary data set. Basically, it defines a set of columns of, uh, that are only of uh, simple attributes. We have the ID and name of the student, and we have the phone uh, of the student by navigating the contact reference. We have an items completed column, which is the size of the grades reference. We have a column that is calculated with an, ester an external function, an external operation, sorry, which is the get final grade. And then we have another column that is calculated with an EOL block. If we run this course.pinset over the model, which I can do with this dot launch configuration file, what we get is in this generated 
folder, in this gem folder, we get a lot of CSVs because in this pin set file there are a lot of dataset rules. So we will go over some of these in a minute. But let me show you the student's summary CSV now. Nothing happens when I open this, but uh, to visualize, so this is the CSV that we have generated. You can see the columns, ID, name, phone, items completed, final grade, course outcome. But it's a bit difficult to see this here. For instance, we have a phone inside and that's not uh, very good. So let me open another picto window and let me put it below here. And we can do it that the course is not as uh, interesting so we can do something like this so as you can see picto is already understanding csv files and here we can see something that was more difficult to see in the csv format for instance dana which is our fourth student has no phone so here we can see the uh, we can see the empty space very clearly. So this is a um, HTML table that is generated over CSV files and we can sort, uh, sort columns, we can search for a specific test, for instance Alice grades, and we can, do, we can have pagination of if we have a lot of entries, it's not the case here, but this is all provided from the Picto uh, in integration with uh, CSVs and with Pinset. As also, we will see that later if I if I have time. I'm looking at my stopwatch now. Um, so um, this is, was a first example. So let's go uh, and and see another ones. So there is a properties uh, gen column generator that we can pass it a list of attributes from the type from a student like ID and name, which are. Uh, here, ID and name, and then it generates columns of them. We can also alias them. We can decide that ID should be no named student ID. And if we go to student contact CSV and we open it, we can see student ID, name, contact email, and contact phone. So contact phone is an, a column that gets made by, uh, and contact email as well by the reference column generator. So reference column generator allows to navigate a single bounded reference, which is here contact, and then get simple attributes. So these are like syntactic sugar generators so that we don't need to write a lot. So let's talk now about, about filter. We can use a guard, which is something that is already uh, popular in ETL, for instance. Uh, that uh, allows us to specify a rule so that students that do not match this card are excluded. And we can also provide a list of students to use with a from expression. So here we are selecting all the students that took part in the final exam. Lastly, I want to talk about the grid generator. There are other features in Pinset, but my time has run out. We can talk about, the, about them in the section of uh, questions. So grid uh, allows us to generate a set of columns that have a similar function to generate them. So let's suppose that we want to generate one column on the course for each evaluation item. Um, to do that, we can use a grid to which we provide a list of keys, which are in this case are basically the evaluation items. And then what the grid does is for each key that we provided, uh, we generate a column based on a header expression and on a body expression. So what we do with the evaluation items here, as header, we use the name of the item. And as body, we extract the grade of a student, of each student um, for that evaluation item. And we do that, this is, this could be understood as doing a for loop over all the grades of a student with the difference that here we are also looping over the grades that the student does not have we are checking them and if it doesn't have them we will get a null and that's fine so let me show you that uh, let me show you that uh, data set and then we can finish the presentation going back to the slides so here you have uh, the ID, the name, and then we have lab one, lab two, partial test, final exam, and final grade. If we go back to FlexMI, that those are the evaluation items that we have uh, here. And we have generated all this column dynamically from the model. We didn't know the 
columns that we wanted to generate until until we saw these elements in the model which i think is also nice so we have reviewed some of the features that are offered by pinset and uh, as future work for pinset we could uh, review the column generators that are included some of them might be improved some of them might be uh, added some new some new ones we could think about an append mode that is typical in model transformations where we have many models and then we fill one output csv that is currently not offered and we could try to think about some way to composite rules also one of the additions that we are thinking about is using pictodiv to uh, allow differencing different tables for instance to compare table visualizations of two versions of a model we can talk more about this if you are interested so this has been all uh, from me. Uh, I hope you liked the presentation. And if you have any doubts of how to use Pinset, just uh, let me know. And yeah, thank you.